Okay, listen up, please. Listen up. As we have these presentations going on, we ask that you cut back on any additional conversations so that people around you can hear the main speaker. If, there, if you have a question, wait till you're called upon and at that time speak. Otherwise, let's respect everybody around us so that they can hear the presenter. And as you can see on the, on the screen, Land Clark is going to talk to you about preparation and the route to excellence. Here you are there, Todd. Well, I'm kind of proud to announce New Mexico's very own Land Clark. I mean, I got to meet him two weeks ago at UNM, and he scared the bejesus out of me. I threw a flag, and I was like, oh, God, here he came, and he was just had that look. And I was like, oh, my. I'm terrified, and then he goes, "Good job," and he walked away after I explained what I had, and he walked away. So that was a that was my very first uh, encounter with Land. But uh, Land lives here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He is the chief building officer or official for the city. Uh, he's been married to uh, Lila Lynn. He has three children that live in Colorado and Utah. Uh, he's been officiating 17 years in D1. He was NCAA official in the Mountain West and Pac-12, uh, working tw uh, 17 total bowls, three Pac-12 championships, including four college football playoff games, and one BCS national championship. He was hired by the NFL in 2018 and is currently a white hat in the NFL, New Mexico's very own Land Clark. Thank you, appreciate that. Now, just if you ever have the opportunity to write a short bio, that is what you heard last night from Tim, not so much. So uh, we'll work on that. Uh, but I, I always appreciate the opportunity to, to meet with officials, mostly because we're all football junkies and any excuse will do. But I especially like working with people who maybe uh, a little bit new to the avocation uh, because it's uh, it, it's been really good to me. I've been I've been very blessed, but I also always want to take the opportunity to tell officials what you do is hard. It is very very hard. I know that's sometimes hard to believe when you've got some dad in the stands questioning your every judgment. But never forget what you do is extremely difficult. If in your real job you were under that kind of scrutiny, you'd be jumping out the window before lunch, right? So please never forget that there's not very many of us and there's a lot of those players out there and they're all trying to get an edge, they're all trying to cheat and, and we have to keep it between the lines. So, so never forget that. Uh, also, and this is particularly pertinent to preparation that, you know, when I was coming up, football officiating is a $10 an hour gig. It's a little more now probably, but you could go out on a Saturday for 10 bucks a game, work three games, take you three hours to make 30 bucks. That's all it took. I had to buy a shirt or something. And then you started getting into high school, so, but you'd make a little bit more money. Now you had to start going to meetings. You actually had to read a rule book, right? And then, you know, small college, well, now there's more meetings, pregame's longer, maybe some conference calls. You had to go to a clinic out of town. Division one, it just keeps ratcheting up. My, uh, my daughter, my second year in the, in the Mountain West Conference uh, for a college uh, project, kept track. Now, th this was inclusive of, of everything I did. Not, not travel, you know, but just on field or in a meeting or a rule study, just active participation. She kept track. You know how much I made that year? Uh, $3.70 an hour. And the reason it is, is because it's, it's so competitive. 
And hey, you know, there is such a shortage of officials. If you just like showing up, kind of game day, doing your thing, going out and having, you know, a couple pops with the guys and the gals, more power to you. But if you're looking to move up, you got to work at it. It's just the way it works. Because, and, you know, you hear us guys who have kind of had some success, you know, but we're lucky. Because you've got to remember, it becomes a numbers game at some point. If you're really good and try really, work really hard, you'll, you'll work for Randy. You'll work for Tim. Small college, you, you're OK. But then there's a lot of good officials that want his job. And there's a whole bunch of officials who want my job because they do pay a little bit better at my level. So you've you got to work at it. If, if you want to get better. Now, I, I put this together uh, before last weekend, so I, I may have made an interesting choice on who I quoted. <laughs> uh, but this, this, this hangs in my office, this, this quote, because I've always considered myself to be of average talent. I'm not. I'm not, certainly not the smartest. I'm not the best looking. I mean, look at this guy, right? I'm not the fastest, not the most athletic. I'm close to the most athletic. But I, I will not be outworked. Now, Mr. Smith probably needs to, look, uh, needs to work on his, on his right cross, but, <laughs> um, but that's, that's what we're going to talk about, because that's the difference. If you work harder, you'll get better at it. I'd also, I think it's important as we're preparing, know what your role is. You heard Tim last night talk about staying in your lane. Well, what is our lane? I wish somebody would have told me this when I was calling high school. Because you go through this weird sort of Mental, where, what is officiating? What do you do? You know, it, it's administrating rules, it's, it's managing the game, it's, it's doing all these things. But what we really need to understand is that you are a bit actor in a production. Entertainment. I don't care if it's freshman, high school, college, NFL, it's entertainment. Nobody comes to watch us do what we do. They come to watch athletes do what they do. So all we're trying to do is make that athletic event fair and competitive. So always keep that in mind when you're looking at film, when you're studying rules. It's not just knowing them. It's how to apply them at the right time. Uh, yeah, well, we're, we're in a perception is reality, reality, right? There, there's a lot of stuff out there. There's media, uh, but it, it's always kind of been the case that people see you as what they believe you to be, and it's pretty tough to change their mind. So as you prepare, keep that in mind. Who's the smart guy, right? Who's the most professional guy? That's the same guy, by the way. And then, uh, and who do you want on the game and that's not the same guy? So as you prepare, start at the end of the season. You're done with your year. You're putting away all your stuff. You've, you've worked your last game. I would suggest you step away. Take some time off. Don't think about football. Do something with your family. At whatever level, you're neglecting somebody, right? You're, every weekend you're gone, 
You're, you're at meetings, you're at conference calls, you're, you're missing out on your family. So make it up to them a little bit. Take a little bit of that big money you all make <laughs> and spend it on your family. And then just do, do, do something you enjoy, you know, golf, bowl, whatever. But at some point, <clears throat> evaluate last season. This is, this is so important because do, do it while it's somewhat fresh. Because w w when you're in the moment of the season, it, it's really tough to, to kind of lay out and to identify, identify those things that you did well and those things that you need a little bit of help with. So if you can kind of sit back and really reflect at the end of the season is a time where you can kind of put those on a list. And truly evaluate yourself fairly but not overly critically. And I know most of us, especially the people in this room, because you're here because you care, yeah, don't be overly, overly critical, but we all recognize things we could do better and things we did fine. And then make a plan. Right? A goal without a plan is a wish. So, in the off season, stay in shape, get in better shape. Control what you can control. You know, some of us are taller, some of us not so much, some of us are, you know, built differently. But, you know, if, again, perception, right? If you're round, the perception is you can't cover the play. You might be the fastest person on the field. I mean, if we lined up everybody and we sprinted 40 yards, you know, some of those big guys could move. Doesn't matter. You don't look like it. So get in shape. Lose a few pounds. You don't have to be as, as, as uh, obsessive as I am, and I am. You know, runs in the family. We're kind of exercise nuts. But get in shape. Because if you're not in shape and you are physically tired on a football field, you will not be as good. And you should never think about physical condition on a football field. That's a distraction you don't need. And hey, it's hot in the early, late summer, early fall, and it's cold in the winter, and if you're not in good uh, physical shape, it'll affect you. You'll, it will be a distraction. I'm, I would also suggest work on your management skills. Football officiating is all about game management. It really is. Because you can, you know, you're going to call holding and, and you're in pass interference and, and, and you're going to get most of them right. But you're going to miss a few of them. But if you manage the game right, nobody cares. Think about the games last season. You may have had some games where you kicked a couple calls, right? Nobody said much of anything. But you may have had a, game, a, a couple games that you nailed, grade-wise, but you fumbled a few measurements and didn't deal with the coaches or the players very well, and you took a bunch of grief because you didn't manage the game. That is such an important part to football anymore. So work on it. This may come to a shock, but officials have big egos. A personalities, most of us. So as you're dealing with your crewmates, learn how to deal with those kind of personalities. It's, it's different. A lot of you are, you know, you have employees. Well, you can't treat crewmates like you do employees. You certainly can't fire them. I know, I've tried. And then, so figure out. Everybody's different. Everybody likes different approaches. So just work on that. And, it, and you may not know your crew. You may work in an environment where you mix up with people. But you pretty much know your group. 
You know, when I was in high school, there was 110 guys here in the local group, and I pretty much knew them all. Now, this may sound negative, but this, uh, you know, becoming a, a master manipulator is not meant to be, you know, negative. It, it, it is truly a way to manage the game. If you know how to deal with people, you can manage a game. And that's coaches, that's players, because we, it's certainly been my experience that Coaches, is coach still here? No. Coaches don't know the rules, and officials don't really know football. You, really, you, you know football rules, but do you really know football? How many, people, how many people can recognize the cover two at a snap? Not very many hands go up, right? So understand that. And they have so much more invested in it. They are so much more biased. They've been spending the entire week with that group of kids. They love them. They would never make a mistake. I had a coach come to me one time when a guy on the crew threw a flag. He said he would never cuss. He's Mormon. So they're, they're going to have a bias. So learn how to deal with people and always deal with coaches and players. If you're, that, if you're that type of official who is very, very good, but you don't deal with distractions of, of interacting with people, you're probably not going to have a lot of success. Conversely, you know, if you can get the big ones right, but you can deal with people, you're going to be fine. You're going to succeed. So the off season rules. You know, I got to say, in my career in football officiating, rules importance has become far more important. Uh, on on my first uh, college football crew, um, I, we were we were going to uh, Fort Lewis college and uh, a guy on the crew was lamenting that he didn't get any uh, the office never sent him any cards and every week we were giving this guy cards game cards right and this is I don't know two-thirds of the way through the season and uh, this particular individual uh, drops his rule book out of the van game cards go everywhere because we, we didn't really deal with all rules all that much. But that has changed. A lot of officials at every level have really gotten into the rule book. But I will say they've gotten into the rule book to pass some test on paper or online or whatever. They're not all that much better on the field. So study rules that way. Yes, if you have to pass a test, what's the deadline? September 15th. By September 15th. So sometime between now and September 15th, study rules that way. But don't study them always that way because you know what? You really don't have time to reach out in your back pocket and circle it down in distance and, you know, write who fouled. And that's not the way football works, right? So don't be so worried as you're studying rules about, you know, the exact yard line, because we have all these markers if we do it right. You know, we've got a ball on the ground, we've got this yellow piece of laundry, and we've got a previous spot. We, we have all those markers that aren't, that are visual, that aren't in a rules test question. So work on administering rules quickly and efficiently, because that's game management. Again, nobody wants to see four middle-aged people talking between downs. They want to see snaps. So get it done. Put the ball down, blow the whistle, let's play football. Uh, 
Uh, video is, is critical. I mean, you know, uh, Brad is the, is the video master, so I'm not going to spend a great deal of time uh, dealing with, with this thing particularly. But, you know, certainly look at your calls and your no calls from last year. You know, things you wish you would have done better. Uh, but uh, think, don't, don't think about just the play. Think about where you are, right? When you watch that play and you said, okay, I nailed that, I nailed that hold. Well, how did I progress to get there? Put yourself back in that position when you made that call, or anybody else makes the call, I guess, and go through that progression. Not just looking at the play, put yourself in the play and go through that so you'll be able to replicate that when you did it right. Conversely, change something if you didn't get it right. I mean, I couldn't work for Randy. He only lets you watch a play three times. I've watched plays 300 times, especially the ones I screwed up. Because I want to know, how did I miss that? Where, where did I fail in my progression on that play to pick up those indicators that were talked about? And of course, what am I looking at? So you get into the preseason, right? You know, you've had some time off, you, you, you're in shape, you're, uh, but you're getting close and, uh, and you're getting ready for football, getting excited, all the things we do. Uh, now we get in football shape. I've known a lot of officials who could run 10 miles and not hardly even be breathing hard. They go out there week one and pull a hamstring because they haven't sprinted since last fall. You know, I, I have a few neighbors who think I'm weird because they really don't know what I'm doing in the park. But they think this cat is out there because he's running backwards and sprinting up and down. And, but that's what you need to do because that's what you do on the field. So if you prepare by just running on the treadmill, that's not what you do on a football field. except on a few Pac-12 games I've been on, because that's all you do is just run up and down the field. But you sprint, you move. You, so replicate those kind of actions. You know, if you have a local team, you know, and, and they do some off-season stuff, you know, hang out with them. That's the same. Football players and football officials do a lot of the same kind of movement. Rules, keep on rules. As I said, test. Uh, and, you know, Brad will probably cover this far better than I will, but, you know, when you, when you look at, at pre and post, it has been my experience that when, when people out are on the field, they have a very rigid process of, you know, pre and post snap and how I'm going to transition, okay, at the snap, you know, I'm going to look here first and then I'm going to go to here, and then I'm going to go to there, and then I'm going to work the play. But then when they watch video, they're just watching the play. Well, that's not helpful. Again, a numbers game. You know, when I worked college football, 12 games was a pretty good schedule. And, you know, maybe you'd get a bowl game, you'd get 13. Well, for ease of math, right? Let's just say, you know, you maybe get, you know, 1,500 plays a year. How many flags did you have? Two a game, maybe? Well, that's not a lot of volume. I, I got to tell a story. On Mike, uh, uh, Mike and I worked the Cotton Bowl quite a while ago. And we were together on, on the, uh, during the season. We were across each other. Um, he was side judge, field judge, or one of those two. I think Mike had four flags the whole year. Well, maybe five. But he got them all right. I had like 27, and I got half of them right. But it's, 
if you try to get better working football, you just don't have enough opportunity. You just can't get enough snaps. So when you're watching film, don't watch it like you do on the couch. Watch it like you do on the field. Go through those progressions. Count. I do. I can't, I can't have my family in the room when I watch, watch video. They think I'm a dork. Because I literally go, I'm in. I'm, I'm, I'm in. I do it standing up for crying out loud. I'm not kidding. I've got a big monitor and I stand up desk. It'll make you better. Transitions are important, and, and if you can get, if you can transition appropriately, find the foul indicators, you will be a great official. Because you're playing the odds. Practice and scrimmages, you know, just work as much as you can when there's blanks in the gun. Doesn't count. And those of you who have worked UNM scrimmages and have had the misfortune of having me you know, run at you and scare you to death, please use those opportunities for you. I get it, I've been there. The most nervous I've ever been on a football field is right over here. Because when I came up, when you were invited to a UNM scrimmage, your career depended on how well you did. Because if those college guys, when they invited you out to a scrimmage, didn't think you measured up, they wouldn't invite you back and you were done. I get it. It's different. It's nerve wracking. You've got you know, some people who are comfortable out there and you're not so much, but officiate. That's the time not like the regular season. If you're flipping coins on a foul, get it out. Talk about it. Don't work tentative. Work big in practice. That's how you get better. OK, we're in the season. So we can quit preparing. Obviously not. Maintain that football shape. I, again, I've known a lot of officials that, boy, they, they can make weight at the clinic because they fasted since Wednesday. And then two weeks later, they're ballooned up and they're the same size and can't run. Stay in shape. Rules for in-season. Again, different than you would in the off-season before the, the test. Now we're getting into things that actually happen. Because let, let's face it, you know, some of those rule, rules questions never would happen. You know, geese don't often land on the field. Lightning doesn't strike the scoreboard. You know, th th those kind of water bucket, bucket plays just don't happen very often. Study the rules you'll actually use and how to administer them. Every week, evaluate your performance. The calls, the mechanics, the communication. And here is a big one, folks. I know it may sound kind of funny, but how does the game play? Again, we're part of the production. You might get every single call right, but look bad doing it. Nobody cares. You have no credibility. Pre-game meetings, get involved, know the crew, know who needs some help, know who you can get some help from. Everybody knows, right? There's people that you'll work with. You know, if you, if you have an enforcement question, you want them in that conversation. And others, you wish they'd stay out of the conversation. So you have to know that. And then present topics of how they will be accepted. Don't, you know, don't, don't bring up that play that somebody struggled on last week unless it's good for the crew. 
How, how could we have helped everybody get it right, not, uh, you know, let's watch, watch John kick this call. And as you're watching video in the pregame, don't grade plays. Grade your plays during the week. Grade your crew's plays. If you have a separate grader, uh, sure, listen to their input. But don't do it in the pregame. It's not valuable. Not valuable at all. Talk about the things that will help the crew get better. Now, some of those are maybe downgrades or things we didn't do right, but we're not regrading it. We're just identifying what we didn't get right and how we improve it. And show the good stuff. I've worked with some referees, and then during the pregame video, if you, if, you, if you happen to have it, we're just showing everything we screwed up. Well, that really gets you fired up for the game, right? You should show the good stuff, too. There's plenty of it, right? You, you worked 150 plays, and you blew four. I think we can find a few more that said, hey, you know, nice job, good spot. Nice administration of that penalty, whatever. And be critical without being demeaning. As I said, football officiating's hard. Really easy watching the video in slow motion, frame by frame, on Monday morning. So be considerate of who actually kicked the call. Rules. Uh, this is something I do, something you might want to consider, especially those few lucky individuals who work the same crews. Uh, SMEs, you, you've heard it, you're probably business sub subject matter experts. Even if you're not working with the same people, you're the referee, call them up on Wednesday and say, hey, I want you to be the post-scrimmage kick enforcement expert. Talk about it in pregame. Because we all know who learns the most is the teacher, right? Helps the crew, helps the individual. Might want to consider it. And then mechanics. You know, and, and I know you're working with different people, but I'll tell you what, if you're a referee or you're a member of a crew, and it's, you know, week six or eight, and you're talking about where we're going to stand on kickoff, that's not a very good use of your time. I think we got that, right? Let's move on to something a little bit more unusual or something that, that we can actually mechanically get better at, where we're looking, where we're moving, how we're transitioning, those kind of things. And then pregame at the site, can't emphasize this enough. Know when you get off the bus, you are on. How many people has a, has a video camera in their pocket? Everybody. So don't think you can screw around and, or be a jerk or do something inappropriate and think somebody can't capture it because that's just not reality anymore. So when you get off the bus, everybody's looking at you, and you know what? How many times have you gone to that security gate and they go, oh, the officials, right? <laughs> Do we look glass-eyed? Well, they know who you are. When five or seven or eight you know, middle-aged people get off the bus, you know, they, they don't think you're the choir. <laughs> handle, prof handle your meetings professionally. You know, it, it's, it's great to have a good time, but, you know, just remember there's, there's anything, you, need, you know, when you're meeting with the coaches, when you're meeting, you know, if, if you do have some media or, uh, or anything like that, or the trainers, you know, a professional. Always be professional. 
and dress to impress. As I said, they know who you are, you know, and if you're wearing, you know, shorts and flip-flops, that's, that's probably not going to convey the type of professional you would like. And then, hey, I, I, I know this is not new, but seriously watch football as they warm up. Because the first time you see a receiver run a pass pattern is on first down, uh, that's kind of scary. Your mind isn't locked in at that point. So why don't you lock in an hour before when they're just running around out there? And then after the game, watch the game. I'm a bit OCD, so I, I watch the game twice. I watch the game first solely as a football fan. How does it play? If I was watching, you know, a, a, a game, if, if I was watching Brad Rogers' game, you know, I, I would look at that. You know, I'd take a few notes because he's quite good. And, uh, but I, I watch my own game the same way. How does it play? How does that football fan see that game? And then I watch it again, this time probably several times back and forth because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm grading the game for me because remember, if you have somebody grading your game, it doesn't matter whether it's a crewmate or a friend or an official grader uh, from your league or conference. There's a lot of things that go into that. And, and oftentimes there's messages they're trying to convey. You know, we, we, we really want to get better at holding. We're not calling enough holding. So that marginal call, you may get a no call for, but do you really want to call that? Do you really want to make a living calling that every week? So always grade the game yourself. And if you, you know, again, if you work with the same people, you know, the whole game. You know, you may be an umpire, not all that familiar with pass interference, but you need to be there. You need, every official on the field needs to know every position. So they can help. You may have to step in. Uh, I was uh, a, a back judge a long time ago uh, in high school game. A lot of you know Ken Murphy, he was a referee. And the umpire goes down. So we get him off the field. Um, Ken Murphy says, okay, you're umpire. And I said, got it, Ken. So, you know, it takes a little while for things to break up. And Ken backs up and then he looks up to me and he kind of gives me one of these, and he goes, because I'd moved up. I was probably 12 yards deep. <laughs> now closer to 15. So he goes, and I go. <laughs> I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but the dude that was just standing up there got hurt. I ain't doing that. <laughs> but you need to know their positions, because you may have to step in. Make some notes. I, I, I've learned to do this because you, you think you're smarter than you are and you think your memory's better than it is. Right, you watch the game and you go, yeah, I got that, I got that, I got that. Oh, okay, yeah, I could have done that and I should have moved there. And I, I could have I dealt with that coach then instead of later and that might have talked them off the ledge. But you don't. Because now you, you, know, you looked at that play that you clearly missed and your emotions go up and your brain goes <laughs> So, hey, you know, I write it down. You know, sometimes I can't read it because I don't know what I'm thinking about. But write it down because that way you can go, oh, yeah, when you're done. And, and here's another big one. You know, I got to tell you, how, how many of you have worked the perfect game? Mike's come close, but uh, I don't think anybody's worked a perfect game. So you're going to screw it up. 
So move on from that because you know what? Your mistakes are your own and you learn from them. So move on from the disappointment. Oh man, I can't believe I missed that call. What was I thinking to say, okay, I can't put that toothpaste back in that tube. How am I gonna learn from it? What was going through my mind? What was the distraction? Who was I listening to? What was I thinking about that caused me to do that? Now it's a learning experience, it's positive. You'll feel better about yourself and you will get better. And take a step back. Again, I'm a little OCD. I have to work at this because you know it, it's you know football 24/7, and, and and you can get burned out. So make sure sometime during that week, after the game, you take a break. Take your significant other to dinner, or you know just kind of veg out for a while, you know binge watch some stupid series, whatever, but uh, take a step back. And you know what the best part about football? Is you get to do it again next week. Just keep doing the same thing. Questions? How much time do I got? Mike? It's going to be a long half hour of you. <laughs> all, the, all the positions have seen indica uh, foul indicators. It, and this, I'm, I mean, I've been called, but no one really told me as to what you're looking for prior, uh, other than today that I started watching hands and so forth like that. But when I started to where I am now, nobody's really brought up so what are indicators for holding, what are indicators for this. That is it. That is a great question. That, and I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because a lot of things, you know, you want to know the difference between you know an NFL official and, and a high school official. They're just exposed to more resources. Right? We, we get a lot of stuff that you guys don't. And that's, that's really the only difference. That's a great question. Stand up here. So you are an umpire or referee. Right, stand, stand this way. Yeah, all right. Yep. And I'm blocking him. Well, if I'm standing, if, if we're going that way and you can't see him, I can't hold him in today's rules. Because as Brandon pointed out, you know, we, we, we all do this because you know, they cheat, right? But we don't call that anymore. So you're kind of going through your transition from point of attack to next point of attack to second level, whatever. As long as you see offensive butts or backs, you, you can't call holding. Now, if I'm standing behind them and I start seeing him, not the offensive guy, that's the indicator. That needs to draw your attention. And the only good one they'll never do, and that's let go. Right? I heard somebody uh, earlier make a statement Stay here a minute. Yeah. that, uh, you know, tell them to let, you know, they need to let go. Well, I'll tell you what, you tell an offensive lineman to let go, you've lost credibility because you know what his coach has told him all week long? Let Never let go. go. <laughs> so that's again, learn football. You know what he told him? Change your leverage, yep. right? So I'm here, play's coming here, I'm in trouble yep. because I've got slow feet. I know the feeling, trust me, right? So the instinct is, is to just hang on. Well, now I've twisted him and they run off his back and then we've got 
flags. But what the coach would like him to do is not grab on, but instead of driving this way, drive this way and try to push him past the play. Indicators, right? Uh, pass interference. Somebody help me here because it's been a long time. But, <laughs> you know, if, if, if we're, if I'm a defensive back and he's, he, he's running at me, and we ever get hip to hip, what can I do to foul him? Grab the jersey. Cut off. Arm bar. Can the arm bar. Right? So those are the kind of indicators you need to go through your mind to when can he foul. If he's here, right, I can certainly chuck him with the ball in the air. Does high school Tonight. have an illegal contact rule? Any? Yeah? Yes. Yes, in the air. Once the ball's released. The ball's OK, so it's just past interference. So, so I can do this before, yeah. but I don't even have to think about arm bars, really cutoffs. All I'm thinking about is early contact. Right? And when I get here, I can grab him or I can arm bar him, but I don't have to worry about the other. Right? Same thing with playing the ball. And we let that, that is a huge get out of jail free card, right? I can do a lot of things as long as I'm doing this, not this. And again, it's perception, right? So, you know, I do this and I'm bumping the crap out of him and I'm good. So those are some of the, those are some of the indicators. Thank you. Another thing is, is that <clears throat> for the longest time, when guys would go to the ground, you could quit looking at them, right? You can't anymore. They're, they're, they're too good at what they do. Because now when they go to the ground, they throw their feet up. Tripping. Again, an indicator. So a guy goes to the ground and he's whiffed, right? So you're in your, trans in your transition, you're, you're, a, you're a wing official, right? And that tackle comes out on that defensive end and he whiffs, just misses him. Guy puts a move on him and he goes to block him and he just goes to the ground. That's an indicator because what he will instinctively do is as he goes down, he'll do this and trip him or leg whip him. That, that's certainly an indicator. Because, hang on, my, hold that thought. You know, football officiating is a game of averages, right? So, the same play, you're a, you're a wing official. Defensive comes in and goes between the guard and the tackle. Double team block. What are the odds are that's going to be a foul? Not, not much. Possible, but just not probable. So play the odds. Move on. You know, get on that back who's blocking that linebacker who might hit him in the back or low or whatever. Yes, sir. Two questions, if I may. First of all, how important do you feel the case book is? And then... On a written test, how do you break down that question? Well, <clears throat> I, it, it, everybody learns everything differently. I know some people who are, are, are readers, right? They, they read the rule book. They, they read the case book. Some people are test takers, you know, which is pretty much what the case book is, right? Uh, so you just repetition and then that's who I am I mean I take hundreds and probably thousands of tests because again I, I want to do it efficiently but so and I and I would say high school case books 
uh, are, are great plays to learn from. Uh, but you know, certainly in our rule book, it's essential because there are, there are rules that exist in the casebook that don't actually exist in the rule book. I don't think you run into a lot of that, but so we have to be pretty familiar with it. But the the important thing is is that it's real plays. So put yourself into that play. And I and I think what. Uh, Mike is referring to is, and I know online tests are, are, are becoming different, but figure out a way to diagram plays when you take a test, especially if it's timed. Because how many people like taking tests? Uh, that's what I thought. <laughs> Uh, you know, I have an interesting thing in, in my real job. You know, we, we get we get construction people uh, who are trying to be inspectors um, that 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 have to get certified. You know, it's a board test, and it, and it's challenging. And there's several of them. Well, you know, a lot of these cats haven't taken a test since high school, and it's hard. And test anxiety is a real thing. So learn to to deal with it. Because yes, yeah, sitting in your, in your, uh, on your couch doing that test, you may not need to keep track of every little thing, like the clock, and actually who fouled, and, and where was it, and all that, because you, you can ace them on the couch. But when you're in that rules test taking setting, heart rate goes up a little bit, respiration, sweating a little bit, you lose track of those things. So figure out a way to keep track of that. Everybody does it differently, uh, but you know some people write write it out. You know they'll say, you know if there's a foul by the offense, they'll put A O H at the 32, and then if there's a change of possession, they'll put a particular mark, and then B fouls and than the result of the play. Some people actually write on the test if it is a, a written test. You know, they'll you know, circle the important spots and put squares on the fouls. Whatever you need to do to keep track of that because I would say the vast majority of missed test questions are due to not paying attention. When you get that answer sheet and you go, oh, I got that one wrong, and you read it, and you go, oh, duh, right? And that's why. So figure out a way to you know, either diagram, write it out, uh, whatever works for you, to be able to keep track of it, because that's probably where, where you're going to fail it. But I, I, I truly believe this. That's for taking the test. And you do have to study that way, at least for a time before your, your clinic or your deadline uh, or whatever. But don't study the whole year like that, because that is not valuable on a football field. Not at all. Accuracy and speed is valuable on a football field. You come, you, you're, doesn't matter what position, not, you don't have to be a referee. You're a back judge. You're come running in and say, that, hey, no, that's from the line of scrimmage. You are golden. You are a crew saver. They're asking for you to be on their games. It is so important. Was there a thing you had, Mike? Just the case book and how to break down a question. Yeah, I, you know, all... Yeah, I really liked what uh, Brandon did earlier about you know breaking down down plays. Uh, you you can get carried away, and I know some people do about the what ifs, but I would suggest you do that with every feasible scenario on every rules question or casebook question you come up with, come across. Because you read it, no, oh, maybe that one's pretty simple, so you come to a quick conclusion and you're able to answer it. 
But then think a minute. You know, what has happened in your games? The what ifs, right? Uh, avoid the geese landing and the lightning strikes. Just keep it football, but you've all been there, and I think we could all do it. You read this question, and you go, okay, that's pretty straightforward. You know, but uh, well, what if we had a foul up front? Or what if we had a dead ball foul? Or what if they didn't score, or they did score? Those kind of things will just give you more opportunities to be able to administer penalties. And that's the secret. When you see a crew efficient, efficiently administer a penalty, you have instant credibility for them. I mean, the crew has instant credibility because they know what they're doing. You know, everybody has that nightmare scenario about misenforcing a penalty, right? And just, it's pretty consistent. You misenforce a penalty, there's gonna be some consequences. Probably a suspension. Right? Because, you know, you can miss holding. You, you can even miss a clip. You miss enforce a penalty, you're going to get in trouble. And if you're trusting your career with that idiot that happens to be wearing the white hat, you are a fool. Don't trust him to administer or her every single penalty. Check their work. And like I said, you come in there and save the day, oh no, no, that's previous spot. That's the end of the run. That's during the kick. You will be a star and it'll get around. Questions? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's funny, I make this joke often in the off season, they say, oh, you're in your off season, how do you like it? And I says, I really like it. And they says, well, what do you do? I say, I, I avoid airports and arguing with millionaires. I don't get the opportunity much in the off season. Uh, and I enjoy it, but it's, it's an interesting uh, dynamic that high school coaches, in my opinion, have a little bit too much time on their hands. So they tend to quit coaching and start refereeing. And so there's, there's some yelling and whatever. But by and large, most NFL coaches are too busy. Now they'll yell. I mean, they're, they're, it's an emotional game, right? And, and please always remember that. They, they're invested. Uh, they, day, night, all the time, they are in this. So they're going to be emotional, especially when you bring back that touchdown or that big gain or you give them that first down, whatever. So understand that, but... You know, the, you know, you, you talk about interesting things you say. M most NFL uh, coaches are very professional. Uh, some of them have a uh, little bit struggles with the uh, expletives. Uh, one of them may have just retired here recently. Um, <laughs> and, and, and I got to tell you, well, uh, Co anybody remember Coach Pellini at Nebraska? Oh. Oh. Yeah. So I'm 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 working uh, the Holiday Bowl, and I call holding in the end zone safety right before halftime. 
I would suggest if you have a volatile coach, don't make a big call right before halftime. Timing's not good, right? So him and his brother, I don't remember his brother's name. Frank, maybe? Anyway. They come out and, you know, they're, they're there and, you know, and, and, and he, I don't know, maybe could string about two, maybe three words without an F-bomb in it. But after about the sixth F-bomb, I kind of quit listening. So he rants for a while and I'm trying to nod politely and, and then there's this silence and, and I really didn't know where he left off. So I says, well, coach, is there a question in there? And he says, F you and walked off. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing somewhat. But with your interaction with coaches, it just, well, you know, college coaches, they're, they're a bit more emotional, but uh, uh, Gary Patterson, TCU, that guy looked like he was just killing officials. I'm, you know, the neck vein would pulse and, you know, his shirt would be untucked and he'd be tugging on his pants and throwing his arm. He was a good guy. He was rarely cussing you out. He was emotional, but he was rarely cussing you out. So I, I remember that perception idea. You had to, hey, coach, relax. I, I got it. But you have to deal with them because if you deal with the coach, you can pretty much deflate the situation. You ignore them. It's just like when you're dealing with your spouse, right? <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I ignore my wife, the volume goes up. So don't do that. And I know, and trust me, at, at every level, high school coaches are teachers. You know, college, you know, they're, they're good at what they do. You know, in, in college and, and in the NFL, they're millionaires. They, they get paid $10,000 a night to go speak. Am I going to out-talk these guys? No. And you don't have to, but you got to listen. Often the best communication you can have with the coach is, yeah, I hear you. Got it. Thanks. Okay, yeah. And I don't know about you, but how many times has a coach come to you with, with a le legitimate, although maybe emotional question, and you gave him an explanation, and he said, oh yeah, you're right, thank you. Does that happen to anybody? So there's, again, <laughs> not a lot of value in that approach, right? Tell them what you saw, tell them what you called, and of course, you know, that will be followed by that's BS, and you go, well, coach, that's the way I saw it. Move on. But don't let a coach cross the line. I, I don't know if you, if you, well, you probably don't know, but when we interact with coaches, we, t we turn on the radios. So the whole crew hears it, and New York. So don't let them do something stupid. I had a coach, it's not important where, it just time and circumstances. Wing official had a couple of really great calls. Uh, he had a, a, a false start that kind of looked uh, NZI, and then immediately had, a, a, in the very next play, he had an offensive pass interference. Great calls, really, really solid calls. Coach really didn't agree with that assessment, and he was hot. So we got a dead ball period, he's waving me over, I'm coming over, over there, and the coach starts out with, I don't want to question anybody's integrity, and he was not able to finish the sentence because I go, no, you don't want to go there. And he kind of calmed down and then just started to complain, which is fine. So as you're dealing with the coach, again, recognize their emotion, understand that they are a bit biased in their opinion, 
but just just tell them what happened in your in your estimation. That that's all you can do, and it's okay to say, well, coach, we're going to have to agree to disagree, or we'll watch it on film and and we'll see if I missed it or not. That's okay. <laughs>